welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be synthesizing stannic or tin-4 iodide. Stannic iodide has the formula SNI4, where tin is in the plus 4 oxidation state. Like most tin-4 compounds, tin-4 iodide is hydrolyzed completely by water, forming a near-clear solution. The synthesis of tin-4 iodide is much simpler and more straightforward than that of tin-4 fluoride, chloride, or bromide. This is mostly due to the ease of use of iodine. Iodine being a solid is much easier to handle than, of course, chlorine or fluorine being gases that are highly toxic and reactive, and bromine, which is the same as chlorine and fluorine with its dangers. However, it is a liquid. Iodine is very easy to contain. I just have it in a plastic uh, bottle with a uh, little seal under the cap here, and I keep this in the bag. Nothing leaks out and uh, keeps pretty nicely. So what I'm going to do today is make tin-4 iodide by the direct reaction of metallic tin, which you can see in the speaker right here, with iodine, right in this container, uh, under chloroform. Uh, iodine is soluble in chloroform, uh, which will make the reaction with tin uh, pretty easy. You just need to warm it up a little. I'm just going to use a warm water bath to warm the reaction and uh, put a cold watch glass over the top to make sure not a lot of chloroform or iodine escapes. I actually have a little bit of tin iodide here that you can see. Just in this amber glass vial, let me just... There we go. It's a very nice bright orange powder. You can see it there. And that's exactly what we've been making today. So first I'm going to measure out some chloroform and put that in the beaker. Uh, I'm not going to use too exact measurements. Uh, this is just a simple and organic preparation. I'm not going for best yield or exact stoichiometry or anything like that. So I'm just going to use a slight excess of tin to iodine to make sure that there's no iodine left over and we get some nice pure uh, tin for iodide without any iodine contamination. So let's go. So here I have 35 milliliters of dry chloroform and a 100 milliliter beaker on the hot plate stir. So I'm just going to put in a small stir bar to stir the reactants and I'm going to add the chloroform. Okay, so now I'm going to add a few small spatulafuls of solid iodine. This iodine is dried, uh, it's nothing that I made. Uh, the iodine that I made is not dry, it is pretty wet. And when it is kept in the freezer, ice forms on it. So that's a pretty good indicator that it is not dry iodine. So I'm not going to use that, I'm going to use my dry iodine here that I got online. So just a few spatulafuls, probably, I'd say two and a half. Should be fine and you will be able to see the very nice, dark, almost permanganate colored color of the iodine dissolving in the chloroform. So I'm going to turn on stirring. And you'll see that the solution gets very dark purple red. And that is exactly what we want. Alright, so now I'm going to measure out about uh, half a liter or so of uh, just hot tap water and I'm going to set it off to the side. Um, I'm going to put that in the microwave if I need to, um, just to use as a source of gentle heat for this reaction. probably won't use all of it, but it's just good to have a large amount in case. So I'm just going to leave that in the microwave until I need it. Now this reaction can potentially get messy, of course. We are dealing with iodine, and to be specific, a solution of iodine in chloroform. So it is probably a good idea to have some sort of reducing agent here. I just have some sodium thiosulfate. Uh, I believe hydroxylamine salts work uh, fine as well, 
but uh, the best, you know, the undefeated champion of uh, cleaning up iodine would be uh, probably sodium thiosulfate. So that's just a good thing to have on hand. And why did the label come off on that? This thing was not cheap. What the heck? All right, so a fair portion of the iodine has dissolved, so I'm going to turn on the microwave inside of which I have the water for the water bath. I'm just going to use a Pyrex baking dish for my water bath. Put that on longer. So now I feel like I should talk about um, what this reaction is going to look like. So as you can see we have the dark purple color of the iodine in chloroform. When we add the tin and heat it up uh, a fair bit. Uh, we should see a shift in color to a sort of golden orange. Uh, this will take a little while and will take stirring. I'm going to put the watch glass on top to limit the amount of chloroform vapors that come out. It's not too much because uh, it's still going to be below the boiling point of chloroform, but we don't want to have a bunch of chloroform vapors escaping out into the lab. That is not a good thing. So, that looks like, let me check the water temperature, and that still needs another 30 seconds or so. So, uh, once I'm done with that, I'm going to put the hot water in the dish. Then I'm going to turn off stirring and set the dish underneath the beaker. I set the beaker in the water, the hot water. And then I'm going to add the tin. Then the reaction should start. It shouldn't be violent at all. This is a pretty calm reaction um, from what I've seen. I did it yesterday. It was absolutely fine with this temperature of water. So, let's go do that. Alrighty, this water is measuring about 40 degrees, between 40 and 50 C, so let's say average about 45 degrees Celsius. That should be quite alright, so I'm going to turn off stirring here. It's alright if not all the iodine's dissolved. Uh, it will go into solution as things react. I'm actually going to remove this really quick. Make sure this fits nicely on here. Alright, looking good. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to add the warm water. Up to about the 20 mil mark on the outside of the beaker. Or so, and turn stirring back on. I'm probably going to add about half this tin. It's not a ton, but you know. I'm gonna cover the top of the watch glass and. Uh, just gonna let this stir and react. I know it may be a little bit loud, but that's just because uh, the stir bar is knocking against the tin that's in there. So we're gonna let this react and uh, we're gonna watch the color change.
Now that is the color that I wanted. Perfect. All right, let's go outside. Okay, now that we are outside, we can finally prepare the solid stanic or tin for iodide. So I have put this dry, clean 500 milliliter beaker on top of this uh, black glove, just so you can see the crystallization process happen better. And I'm just going to decant off the solution of stannic iodide and chloroform from the tin pellets that are at the bottom. I don't want to include them because we don't need them anymore. Hopefully we should see the tin for iodide crystallize out as a brilliant orange powder. This might not happen immediately. It's going to take a little while for a little bit of the chloroform to evaporate off and for the product to precipitate or crystallize out from solution. If we tip the beaker up a little bit, we will be able to see the stannic iodide crystallize out as the chloroform evaporates. As more chloroform evaporates off, more will crystallize out from solution. So now under the dark chloroform layer we have this nice bright orange powder which you may be able to see. All we have to do now is filter this off and uh, the chloroform will evaporate we left with a dry powder. I'll try to do this a little quickly though so I minimize any hydrolysis of the product from atmospheric moisture. So here's the tin for iodide, a nice orange crystalline powder that sort of sparkles in the light. Very nice looking. We can do a small test of this stuff by just putting it in some water to see its hydrolysis. As you can see, there's barely anything left, just some maybe slightly colored solid, but other than that, just some white solid floating around in there in a uh, pretty much clear solution. So, yeah, I'm just going to uh, put this in a vial now with uh, the rest of my tin for iodide, and I'll call it a day. So, that was the synthesis of tin for iodide from iodine and tin metal. I really hope you enjoyed. You can subscribe if you want to. You can like if you want to. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Without all of you, videos like this would not be possible. Thank you.